a future respiratory therapist uh, and hopefully some uh, working respiratory therapist. I hope you get a chance to see this video. So I want to talk to you today. So first of all, no information, educational information for you students. Uh, I know you're on Christmas break. I was going to do Airvo over BiPAP and break that down. But then I realized you guys are on Christmas break. Y'all don't want to I don't want to watch a video right now to where you have to learn something. And so what I've decided to do instead is to give you some content today that will just stimulate your mind and give you something to marinate on while you're enjoying your break and, and you're getting excited to come back and start either your second or your third or your last semester of clinicals and respiratory care program. So, so what's going on here is, is that I put out a video a couple days ago titled quality over quantity and in several of my videos I've actually uh, really discouraged treatment stacking and you've heard me say if you're stacking and start packing we don't need you and what I'm getting is some kickback in in uh, some private messaging and some direct messaging and nobody wants to talk about this out in the open so nobody wants to wants to put it out there because deep down inside everybody knows that it's not quality and so uh, a lot of talk going on about it's impossible to do what you're saying to do because of our workloads. We have 70 treatments. There's no way you can do one-on-one -on -one therapy uh, for 70 treatments. Uh, you know, I go out with 50 patients. There's no way I can take care of 50 patients and focus on one at a time. Well, I get what you're saying, uh, and, and you're right. If you desire to get all 70 of those treatments done, then yes, you, you can't provide quality respiratory care. Now, if you go out there with the mindset of I'm going to do as many as I can at a high quality level and I'm going to triage appropriately, triage meaning I'm going to uh, miss therapy that may not be indicated, uh, then you can do it with 70 treatments. Now, I tell you that because I know you can because I do it. Okay, so, so you can give me 80 treatments. You can give me nine. You can give me 170 treatments. I'm only going to do about 40 to 50 of them, depending on the day and depending on what that that workload looks like. Okay, and someday it may even be less than that, depending on the workload. So I realize that this is a problem, and the reason this is dear to me, and the reason I'm talking about this today, is because the 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 field of respiratory therapy, when it comes to workloads and quantity mindset being greater than quality mindset is because we created this problem. Us respiratory therapists. I was a part of creating this problem. It saddens me to, to, to admit that, but if I'm being honest with you, I have to tell you the truth. There was a time in my career, early in my career, where you could give me however many treatments you wanted me, you wanted me to have, and I would get them all done. Okay? I, we would leave in the morning, me and my boys head out, go get your treatments done. We'd be done by 8 o'clock at breakfast by 8.05. At 10.05, we'd get up from the, from the cafeteria table and then go out and start our next rounds and be back at the cafeteria table at 12 for lunch. And, and that's the way it was. And the result of that is where we are today. So having been a problem, a, 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 a piece of the, 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 the formula that created this problem, I now feel like I need to be a piece of the formula that helps to solve it. Okay, so the question really comes back to this. How did we get to workloads, the, these outlandish workloads? How did we get to taking care of 50, 60, 70 patients or having workloads of, of 60, 70, 80 treatments at a time. Some of you may be watching this video going, 70? I wish I had 70. Hell, I'm going out with, with 90. I'm going out with, with 70 patients on six different floors. And, and you're right. You probably are. So how did we get to this problem? Well, we got to this problem by focusing on quantity over quality a long time ago. So the mindset was get your treatments done, get back to the department, hang out, gossip, chit chat, do your Christmas shopping, plan your next vacation, and then go back up and do your next set of rounds. We failed many years ago in focusing on quality care when our workloads were reasonable. 
There was a time when I would only have 30 treatments for a 12-hour shift. And I would stack those 30 treatments. Okay? And then I would find myself down in the department or find myself at the cafeteria, find myself somewhere else other than in a patient's room taking care of patients. Now what this does is this puts you visible to the powers that be. So your management staff, they see the excessive amount of people hanging out in the department. They see the downtime that you have when you have 30 treatments. Okay, they see the downtime you may have when you when you're taking care of what how many treatments you have. If you're getting done as fast as you can and you're getting back to the department and just hanging out, then your managers and your supervisors are seeing that as non-productive time, and it's downtime. So budget time, we got to make more revenue. How are we going to do this? Give more treatments. Well, what do you mean give more treatments? Well, right now they're going out with 40. So let's give them 50. And they gave us 50. And guess what we did? We got them done. And months go by, years go by. The next thing you know, we're up at 58. And now we're up to 62. And now we're up to 70. And guess what? We get them done. We absolutely get them done. Do we get them done in quality fashion? Absolutely not. But were we getting them done? Yes, 100%. We were getting them done. And so from, from management's perspective, they see downtime and they see productivity and they see 70 treatments doesn't seem to be a problem. So let's push it to 72. And that's not a problem, so let's go. Say, you see what's happening here? We kept doing the therapy. We, kept, we showed administration that we can do 70 treatments in 12 hours. Now, we weren't doing them correctly at a high quality level. And that's what's got us in this state now. To now we're going, whoa, this is outlandish. How do I give quality care with a workload of 70? Well, you've been doing 70 treatments for the last three years. What's the problem all of a sudden? Well, we're doing 70 treatments, but they're not quality therapy. And, and we're stacking them. Well, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. You're stacking your therapy? You're not supposed to be stacking your therapy. You, you signed a, a policy or a procedure that states that you will not do congruent therapy. Do you remember signing that? No, I don't remember signing it. And you won't remember signing it because you're going to sign 30 or 40 pieces of paper when you're hired. And one of them is going to probably be a policy that you check off or, or, or sign. And you probably sign it every year when you're checking your, your, your little emails and saying, update your, your policy and procedures. And you're just checking it instead of actually reading what you're signing. But it probably says congruent therapy will not take place. Now, there's a small portion of this where there may be a congruent therapy procedure that makes it okay to do two treatments at a time. And if you're following that procedure, then okay. But understand, you've got eight treatments going out there at a time, and something bad happens, a sentinel event happens. Why weren't your eyes on this patient? Well, I was doing treatment six floors, six six doors down. I, didn't, I, wasn't, I was trying to get all my therapy done. Why are you doing more than one treatment at a time? Because I have 70 treatments. You see the problem here? You're going to get hung out to dry. You're going to get reprimanded when it comes to light. Okay? That's your stacking therapy. Now most, I would, I would, I would venture to say that most management teams probably know that treatment stacking is happening. They're not dumb. They're probably aware that this is going on. But their revenue and their productivities look good, so as long as it's not a problem, then we're not going to say anything. 
Okay, your charting doesn't reflect that you're charting because you're smart about it. I was with this room from 7 to 710, from this room from 710 to 720, and this room from 720 to 730, when in reality you were in all of those rooms from 7 to 730. But your charting doesn't reflect that. Why not? Because it's fraud. You can't chart for for congruent therapy, you can't chart your time and charge your patient for a time that you're in two or three or five or six different places at a time. You understand what I'm saying? Like it just, it doesn't, it looks bad, right? And it's not okay. So that brings us to where we are now. Like how do we get, how do we, that's how the problem evolved and that's where we are now. And that's a problem that some of you may go out and find yourself in and you're going to have to figure out how do I stay true to quality respiratory care. Well, first of all, if you find yourself with 70 treatments and you only do 40 of them and you do them quality care, one-on-one -on -one therapy, and you're working from 6.30 to 7 nonstop, and you do 40, and your manager says, why'd you only get 40 treatments done? Then your charting accurately reflects that I did one-on-one -on -one care because I signed a policy that states I won't do congruent therapy. Okay, that's your first line of ammunition. Now, the second line of ammunition is much harder because to truly fix this problem is going to take a collective effort on behalf of all respiratory therapists that are going to make a conscious decision to slow down and do 40 quality treatments as opposed to 70 quantity mindset treatments. You're going to have to slow down. You're going to have to get out of the break room. You're going to have to get out of the cafeteria. You're going to have to become invisible to your management staff. So when they see and they look around, they realize that their staff is out working all the time. And when that happens, then they have a problem. They have a mistherapy problem on a department level, not a one individual basis, but a department level to where and they can't get all this done. They're giving the, they're, they're deliver, out there delivering quality care. And, and our workloads don't support that. That's why they're missing therapy. Okay. Now, when I talk about this, I want to give you something else that came to light to me here in the past couple of weeks. And I was uh, involved with, a, with a, a day at a pediatric hospital. And it came to light in this conversation that this pediatric hospital despite being half the size of the adult hospitals in the area, almost seriously, almost half the size of the adult, other surrounding hospitals that are adult hospitals, they had the largest staff. On any given day, they have 18 to 24 to 26 respiratory therapists covering approximately a 400-bed hospital. Okay, And I pointed this out. I said, it's, it blows my mind that y'all are half the size of these adult hospitals yet you have the largest staff in this area and the person running the the meeting said why do you think that is and the answer was was what i knew it was going to be and her answer was was this is a pediatric hospital and we do not tolerate congruent therapy it is a policy that no two treatments will happen at the same time every therapist will take care of one patient at a time and she said, that's why we require such a higher level of staff than what the adult hospitals require. And it came to light of me in that moment. And I actually got pissed off because I asked myself, when in this world did we decide to separate the standard of care for pediatric patients versus adult patients? When did a pediatric life become more deserving of quality care than an adult life. Okay, well, they're kids. I know they're kids. These are people too. These are moms, dads, sometimes sons and daughters, just like these. These are wives, husbands. It's, it's all a human life. And why are there varying standards for what's acceptable in a pediatric hospital versus what's acceptable at an adult hospital. That blows my mind. If you have any insight into it, I'd love to hear it. Uh, but I wanted to share that with you because I think it's very interesting to our approach to adult healthcare.
okay? So let, let's talk about what a workload, a feasible workload would look like. And to do that, we're gonna break the day down. So your shift starts at 6.30 and it's over at, that says 0700, that's not right. That's actually 1900. So it's from 6.30 a.m. to 7 p.m., okay? Maybe you work night shift and you work 6.30 p.m. to 7 a.m. It doesn't matter. You're basically working from 6.30 to 7 if you're working a 12-hour shift in a hospital. Now, that's actually 12 and a half hours. It's 12 and a half hours because they give you a half hour for lunch. So now you're back down to 12 working hours. Now you got to give report and you got to get report. And I don't care what you say, a quality report, which you know I'm going to talk about quality, should last ballpark 15 to 30 minutes. So we're going to do report times two is going to take away 30 minutes for each is going to take away an hour from your day. So now you're left with 11 hours. You should get a 15 minute break in the morning time, another 15 minute break in the evening time or, 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 or early or late afternoon, depending on when you take your lunch. That's another half hour that is yours. That's not working half hour. So that leaves us with 10 and a half hours. 10 and a half working hours. How much therapy do you think you can actually get done at a quality level in 10 and a half hours? Well, I venture to say that, that one therapy from start to finish, average, I would give you 15 minutes. Now, some of you may say 12. Some of you may say 10. I'm not agreeing with 10. Okay, I might would agree with 12. But let's just go 15. So if you're given 15 minutes for each therapy, sometimes they're going to be longer than that, sometimes they're going to be shorter. So remember, I said average, 15 minutes. Then you're talking about four therapies in an hour. And if you're working for 10 and a half hours, which you should be, okay? It's not, it's not I'm, only, I'm here for 12, I'm going to give therapy for eight, and I'm going to sit around for four. I'm going to shop or I'm going to plan my vacation or I'm going to gossip or, 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 or whatever. You're there working. You should be working for 10 and a half hours, taking care of patients, evaluating patients, collaborating with your nursing, collaborating with your physicians, hospital rounds. All of that stuff comes in. You should be involved somehow with some type of patient care for the 10 and a half hours of your day. Okay, so four treatments that includes pre-assessment. Treatment time, post-assessment, and charting is all included in that 15 minutes, okay? If you're doing 60 treatments and you're down in the department at 5 o'clock and you're charting from 5 to 6.30 or 5 to 7, again, you're visible and you're available to help someone else. Well, I'm charting. You can chart when you get done. That, that never works out good, okay? So figure out a way to chart while you're doing your therapy. That comes with challenges. Not every place, not all charting is created equal, but you got to find a way. And if that's part of the problem, then that's a platform for you to approach this mindset. Ten and a half working hours for an hour. That leads us to, so ten and a half times four is roughly 42 treatments in a 12-hour shift that I believe you can administer in a quality fashion. Okay, I say that because I do it. This isn't something I'm just pulling out from randomly. I'm telling you. That's feasible. Now, of those 42 that you go out with, some are going to go home. Some are going to come in. You're going to have some stat calls. That 15 minutes per treatment accommodates most of that. Now, not all shifts are created equal, and some days you're just going to get your ass kicked. Okay? That's, that's the end of the story. Other days... You're going to make a lot of money for doing very little work. All that evens out in the end. But on an average day, about 42 treatments, you can go out and take care of those treatments and those patients in a high-quality fashion. Don't tell me it can't be done. It's going to take a desire to be better than average, a desire to break away from the, 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 the habits and the trends that have developed over the years, and it's going to take a collective approach to get back to this mindset of quality over quantity. Hope you're enjoying your break.